Regarding the Samsung problem of not cooling the, the fridge area and water dripping, I'm going to try and address those with a slightly different angle to many of the very good videos already out there. Now in this fridge, which was built in nine, uh, 2014, so who knows when it went into service, this was actually thrown on the side of the road. The owner had just given up with it. <coughs> the usual problem is ice build up over here and water leaking down here. So let's have a quick look at how this thing works. Every component here I've tested and works fine, yet the owner threw it out because he was just couldn't take it anymore. The best mod that I've seen that I like is moving this defrost sensor which usually sits over here to here because this is where the ice builds up. But now everything is still working as it did from the factory but it still over time stops cooling. My theory for that is it goes into its defrost cycle as it's called for and it melts probably all of the ice on this here but it doesn't defrost it a hundred percent so now it goes back into the cooling cycle and the ice that has maybe sweated freezes up again goes into the next cycle clears this out no problem and this ice gets bigger and bigger and bigger and harder and harder because it's sweated and now it freezes again so it's not just that snow uh, texture it is solid ice your fan sits in the back here draws air up here along there and out into the cooler box eventually this blocks right up so it's even blocking the fan so apart from this I'm going to walk you through a couple of other mods that I've made which I think will permanently put this to bed before you can put this drain to rest make sure that it is completely clear and I'll show you later on in the video if I can the mod that I've done on those drain tubes down the back there I have a previous video which I made earlier but I've since discovered more things which I want to change but my previous video will show you what to do with those drain tubes and I'll, I may touch on it again in this video grab a uh, measuring dish jug whatever it is put a couple of cups of water in half a liter and pour it as best you can down here pretty quickly and that water should drain because when you go into the defrost there will be quite a bit of water coming down here and if it can't drain fast enough down there it is going to seep over here and into your crisper so if that drain is not working a hundred percent and is a hundred percent clear of debris you are going to get that problem so ensure that that is clear The nice fascia cover that goes over here, um, if you are going to remove it, make sure that you absolutely defrost this before you pull it off because there's a lot of styrofoam and it's very delicate and if it's frozen to anything and you pull it off, you will damage it. Pull it, push up a little bit once you've loosened the screws and ease it out. If there's any resistance that feels like it's not just the friction stop defrost it some more you can force this fridge into force defrost mode if you look on the web a couple of key put a uh, couple of pad pushes and you will force this heating element here to cycle <coughs> I ran this fridge with the cover open as it is right now and with the doors open you can uh, use magnets to uh, 
fooled the fridge into believing that it the doors are closed and I watched it ice up and then when it had iced up a, a little bit I put it into force defrost and what I noticed is that as it defrosts the water hangs on the edge of a lot of these fins just hanging here I personally would like it to well and then the resultant is that it is going to drip down here and hit the splash tray which is on the other part of this cover I would like it to drain on to this back plate so what I did is I've taken these tabs which all sit horizontally and with a pair of pliers I've taken them and I, you see you can turn, I don't know if you can see that, but I've turned them so that they slant backwards at the top. The water tension as it defrosts is going to slide towards the back. And it'll run down the back here. That, that is my intention with doing this. I've done it to most of these here. I've still got to go up and do it on this, these top three rows. And I think that will assist in running the water down the back instead of coming down the front. Because over the cover here there's a aluminium aluminum casing. So this thing is basically sandwiched with aluminum to help get this heat all the way up. But the heater element stops about there and there. Leaving all of this not getting the heat so to say and it's just melting the ice this here is the is the problem area usually just a quick freehand view here you can see these fins how they slant generally backwards I haven't got to the top yet you can see how those are all pretty much horizontal now, the other thing that they do suggest in the manual, sorry about that noise, is that this whole fridge leans backwards about three degrees. And I think that's to assist getting the water to the back of that aluminium and not to the front. You can use something like this, say angle finder, or you could just use a spirit level and just make sure that it's not sitting perfectly level. If anything, you want it tilting a little bit backwards, which will assist with the draining. Here's an example of the defrosted ice hanging on the outer edge of the evaporator because that that fin is slightly biased downwards. Now if I go up, see this one here, it's biased backwards. The water is going to drop towards the back and not to the front. And I intend to bend all those backwards. Now imagine from the, the height up there, if it drops down, gets a clear path through there. When it hits that splash tray, it's going to make quite a splash. So the idea is to try and eliminate all these menisci hanging on these fins towards the front of the door. Just simply by tilting it back like, like this one and it's dropped off the back. Here is the other half of the evaporator enclosure and you can see that it, it's got aluminum uh, sheeting here so it forms like a clam shell around the evaporator, trapping the heat, defrosting, and so on and so on. This is the basic path of the air. It comes in here and here, down the bottom, over the evaporator. And then the fan sits in here, drawing the fan, and it goes down these two holes and and if you can see those two holes there, that's where the cold air exits and out of these four holes here. 
sucked in here. Now if you look closely at this, and sorry I'm going to do this freehand because I've got to get up close, I can see a couple of possible faults here. If you look over here, down at the bottom, this is actually a gap. Water can ingress here as it defrosts and get under this deflection plate. Same on the other side, they've just put some very patchy aluminum tape and again the water can get underneath there and out here. Secondly, water will run down here, course its way down. I have no idea what these are for. I can't see that they locate anything unless it's just to locate this aluminium uh, cover. Water again can get under here and under here. Its only way out is under the splash guard and into your crisper drawer. So this tape here aluminum ducting tape or whatever is your friend. I intend to patch these weaknesses. The other thing worth, worth noting is that as, as it defrosts the water is going to run down here and down to the drain bouncing off this. I'm going to try by using strips of tape to try and direct the water coming down here more towards the center because in the center is the deepest part of the drain. If too much water comes down this side too quickly it may overflow. I don't know, it's just a theory. I'm going to give it a try. Now, here's one of the crucial parts, this little splash guard here. When you install this back into the fridge you have to make sure that this absolutely sits on top of that ledge. It's very soft so if you force it in you will actually bend it and your water will drip down here. So your, your trough in the fridge must sit below here so that any water, and there will be a lot of water coming down here, you can see the skid marks there, will if this is not right, it is going to drip straight down into your tray. Uh, when you install this, you have to push it up home and then if you can, put, get your fingers around the underneath and make sure that that is nice and overlapped. I have bent this slightly just to ensure that, but you don't want to bend it too much because then you'll get splashes from the drops. Quick look here in the bottom left corner will show you what I've tried to achieve with some of that ducting tape. If you compare it to this side, that red mark and that green mark indicate possible water ingress points which can allow the water to go underneath that splash tray, drip tray, whatever you prefer to call it. I'm hoping this again will prevent that and that slant on the uh, on the right hand side of that foil is going to help deflect some of the water dripping down to the center where the drain hole is. Here's the uh, completed uh, modification. Um, you can see that this waterproofing, for want of a better word, is far more substantial than the factory waterproofing. Covering up all those holes that were previously exposed, there are little strips of aluminium tape just to try and guide towards the center to the drain hole obviously a big flow they won't do much but it'll just if it drips slowly maybe it'll just uh, the surface tension will be enough that it'll just put the water 
where I want it. If not, it's not a big deal. So that's pretty much, I think, all that I'm going to do on this one. <coughs> one final mod that I'm going to do, and I hope you can uh, see this as I do it, is I want to bring some heat naturally up to here, the ice problem area. This red line here and here, if you can see it, that indicates the top of this aluminium shroud. It only goes yay far. Right behind it you have this uh, plastic, which is an insulator more than a conductor of heat. So, these guys are just freewheeling up here. They're getting the convection from the heater. And that's where, but up here, there's virtually nothing left to go up. So, what I'm going to do is take a strip of this aluminum foil, and I swear I'm not a salesman for aluminum foil. And I'm going to slide it behind here, so it's making contact with this heated aluminium piece here. Slide it up there, and then I'll peel this top half off here and stick it there. That way when this heats up, at least I'm getting a bit of heat transfer up there, nothing crazy, but it'll... It'll defrost the ice that is stuck to the plastic to a degree. If nothing else, it'll act as a heat sink. And when the fridge is off, it'll be drawing. Uh, it'll be, the, the cold will travel through down to here to warm up. You can't transfer cold. I know that. It's only energy you can transfer. But just for simplicity's sake, you can see where I'm going with this. Just to wrap up this video, I'm going to show you the mod that I did, which I think is one of the better mods for this whole fridge system and probably one of the easiest. If you pull the back cover off your fridge with the uh, compressor and condenser, or you'll see these three pipes pretty much in this order. I think this one is the, these are drain pipes. It's for the freezer, the fridge, and the ice maker. Now, inside of these, and I don't know if you can see it, there are little duckbill valves. It's basically just stop the cool air or the warm air coming up, condensing and causing more problems in your uh, evaporator. If you pull and only this part comes, whoops, only this part comes off, there's still this guy up there. Now, I've already cut these. I took a scalpel. I took a scalpel and I cut between there. What that allows is if the water pressure builds up, this opens. You will not believe the dirt that you find in here. Unbelievable. And it's not from dirt in your fridge, it's from dust, pet hair, pet dander. And it all condenses and goes, and it's tried. I'll see if I can. They try to force it through that little gap there. And if you squeeze it, it, it will not open like that. So this will just, it still retains its old shape, but if you do get a blob of something or other, the chances of it self clearing are much bigger. I would do this to all three of those and you won't believe the difference it makes.